you'll open your Bibles to Luke chapter 24, or your devices, whatever. We'll start in verse 35 after we have prayer. Father, thank you for today, for your word, which convicts and corrects and prepares and strengthens and perseveres when we choose to let you do that. Let us be people of a willing heart to allow you to come in and do all those things so that we can be who you've called us to be, <coughs> the legacy that we leave, just like our eternity begins right now. Help us to treasure what it is that you've entrusted to us and to be obedient according to the promise of your word and, and according to your commandment. Because we are not our own. We've been bought with a price. Help us to remember that and honor that. I pray that what you have to say is brought forth in the message today. And that it makes sense in Jesus' name. All right. Last week we were at early on Sunday morning. Early on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene was on the way. Saw Jesus. He's resurrected. Now what? That's like going to the rock and roll bands or going to any concert you go to. They got all the warm-up bands, and then there's the main event, and then what? Well, the main event is really the beginning. It's the commencement. It's like when we graduate from high school or college. It's the beginning of the next step. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Can you imagine? Jesus has been telling them this stuff all along. I'm going to have to be crucified. I know it's going to be tough, but then I'm going to be raised from the dead. They were probably... Making that even after Lazarus's m majestic exit, they were thinking, you know, this is one of a kind thing. Maybe that didn't really happen. Then he says, "Why, why are you frightened?" He asked, "Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see it's really me. Touch me, and make sure I'm not a ghost, because ghosts don't have bodies, as you see that I do." As he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Still they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. Then he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it as they watched. Then he said, when I was with you before, I told you everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture and said, Yes, it was written long ago that Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message must be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. Now guess whose responsibility that is. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised, but stay here in the city until Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Then Jesus led them to Bethany and lifted his hands to heaven. He blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. So they worshipped him, then returned to Jerusalem filled with great joy and spent all their time in the temple praising God. Now i, I got to tell you, that last sentence sounds really cool, but what did he just tell them to do? <laughs> He didn't. He told him to wait for me. Go, go down, go down. He didn't say just go down and have church. He said wait for me. The promise of the Father's coming for what purpose? To go into all the world, beginning here in Jerusalem, and tell the news. What's the news? It's bigger than we all think, because the Word of God says that eye hasn't seen, and ear hasn't heard, and the mind of man has not conceived the good things that God has for us. And yet. We spend so much time leaning on our own understanding. By the way, please eat the rest of the jelly beans before Marilyn or I get to them. They're back here. 
in this basket and uh, and read the, read the uh, jelly bean prayer while you're doing that or or get a set for you and give it to somebody else or just take the piece of paper off and give it to somebody else and eat the jelly beans either way yes there you go somebody trace is going to get jelly beans for maryland right now yeah all right <coughs> all right so listen i want you to hear this we have <coughs> a god who wants to bless us he wants to bless us and pour out into us and he wants us to accomplish the things that he prepared long ago before we were ever thought of before before we ever n were even on this planet before our parents ever dreamed about us god prepared good works in advance for us to do he wants us to do all of those things he's preparing that for us he's already he's already won the battle he stood up on the cross and died and said it is finished the word actually means accomplished it is accomplished it's accomplished. What needed to be done in order for God to have covenant with us was accomplished when God had covenant with us through himself. That's why, having, that's why we have to come to Jesus. All right, so listen to this. This is, by the way, I was up on the rock over by my house, Skull Rock. I was up about halfway, I guess, maybe a little more about where the eyebrows are. Uh, and I took this picture looking up over my shoulder. So Jesus said again, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, I am the door for the sheep leading to life. All who came before me as false messiahs and self-appointed leaders are thieves and robbers. But the true sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved and will live forever and will go in and come out freely and will find pasture, spiritual security. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. We got to stop helping the thief. We got to stop inviting the thief in. We got to stop making room for him and, and, and allowing him to come in because he only has one plan. And, 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 it's, and it's complete. And God has another plan. And it's abundance. He wants us to have an abundant life to the full till it overflows. I I kind of took my one of my one of my pictures and added some other scripture to it, but this is because we need to understand what God intends for us. What are the thoughts that He has for us? What is it that He wants? He wants us to be equipped just like Adam and Eve were equipped in Eden. They had everything they needed to go be fruitful and multiply. And then they decided to rely on their own stinking thinking instead of doing what God told them to do to begin with. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that today because that's really the message that we're talking about every Sunday. And how do we get saved from that so that we're empowered to do the works that he's given us to do through his spirit so that he has a broader stage on this planet with which to step into other lives who need him just as desperately as I did when I ran into him. <clears throat> he says in 3 John 2, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I want to tell you, <clears throat> the devil wants to steal every bit of that from you. And every time we help him, and we do that by sin, we take away that opportunity. And, and I want to talk about how sometimes we take that opportunity away to the point where we have deceived ourselves. Because salvation is not just a matter of walking up in front of a group of people and saying some magic words. It's about a heart commitment. It's about repentance, being sorry for what got you where you are, and recognizing that what got you where, you're, where you are is what the enemy wants to do to you so that he can steal and kill and destroy every dream and purpose for your life and every, every bit of legacy that you want to leave for your family. He wants to steal that from you, and he's about it every day as you go out and come in. Every day, the enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy. <clears throat> you have to take a stand all the time. You have to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, goeth about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour and it could be you if you're not paying attention and why in god's name do you help him with the words that are coming out of your mouth and the thoughts that you're entertaining in your head 
Why do you do that with the actions that you undertake? And then you expect, I was listening to somebody talk about doing the same thing over and over again, and, uh, and they said, you know, that's the de- and, and, and looking for a different result, that's the definition of insanity. If there's some things going on in your life and you see that pattern of insanity, stop it. Use the, use the, uh, uh, the old hee-haw doctor. Doctor, it hurts when I do that. Don't do that. Stop it. Stop doing that thing that's causing you to be grieved and causing your spirit to be grieved and causing your family to be grieved. You repent and you believe the gospel because God has something good for you. And it's right in front of your nose. <coughs> how do we get there? And how is, it that we, how is it that we walk into the fullness of what God has for us? We walk into that fullness by faith. I've had this slide up a couple of Sundays in a row because something really impressed God about Abraham. God called him and Abraham God called him to leave everything that was familiar to him, leave his land, leave his family, leave everything that would give him that comfortable end that everybody wanted to have and go to a place I'm going to tell you about that's better. You've never seen any place anything like this. Abram got up and did what God told him to do. That impressed God. And when we do that in our lives, when we allow ourselves to be empowered by the blood of Jesus Christ and the spirit of the living God to do what he told Abram to do and he tells us to do something like that in our life, why are we not doing that? Why do we allow ourselves to be programmed by generational curses and generational habits of families that went before us? Are every, all of our neighbors are doing it this way. Why, am I, why, why can't I just do things the way my neighbors are doing it? Because a lot of your neighbors are going to hell. And not only that, they're contributing to the destruction of the life that God's given them here because they're not paying attention. You know, some people are so poor they can't even pay attention. Don't be that person. God gave you his spirit living inside of you. You, ha- you have enough resource to pay attention. So pay attention in Jesus' name. We have to walk by faith. That's the, the next thing. This is another slide I've had. We have, to, we have to walk by faith and not by sight. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. Listen, this is how we access the pathway to God's best for us. But understand that 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 little limitation that those who generally preach the prosperity gospel, that little limitation that, that we have to go past that because whatever he puts in our life, is to go out into the world and preach the gospel. You see, that was an assignment that they got from Jesus. That assignment passed on to us. And if you've been bought with the blood, if you've been filled with the spirit of the living God, that is your assignment from this moment forward. Not just showing up in church on Sunday, but show up. And then go out into all the world and preach the gospel with your thoughts, with your words, with your actions, with your choices. And preach the gospel to yourself. Sometimes what we do is we carve out this thing and it's for every, it's good for everybody else, but I'm going to continue to do things my way. And you still keep getting those same results that you've been getting all along. Maybe you should think about doing it God's way. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. We get here by faith. Listen, it's not... You know, the Ten Commandments are, are, are really examples of how to not walk by faith. When we walk by sight, we do those things, the Ten Commandments. We worship dumb idols. We go out and find idols of our own. Remember, that's how, what they used to do back then. They'd go out and find a piece of wood or a piece of rock, and somebody would say, I see an idol in there. It's coming out. Ching, 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 ching. See, right there's that idol. It's a dumb piece of rock. It was a dumb rock before. It's a dumb rock now. Maybe artistic, but dumb. We do that in our lives. We, deter- we determine what our idols are. We deter- determine who our idols are. And instead of worshiping God, we worship those idols. And oftentimes, those idols are ideas birthed out of our own opinions and our own thoughts. And we worship our own thoughts and we worship our own ideas and God's suggestions we set to the side. When we walk contrary to what God's word is, we walk outside of the blessings of God. And 
and I, I'm, I, I thought I put this in here. Yeah, here we are. We're going to go back to this other place. Uh, James chapter 1, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. James chapter 1, verse 16 through 18. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. What's the true word, Jesus? And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. We are the prized possession of the Father because of the finished work of Christ, who came out of that tomb not last Sunday, but 2,000 years plus ago. You hear what I'm saying? He's been alive ever since then. That is the basis of the good news because life and death is the ultimate struggle. And people who die without Jesus, people who die without a relationship with God, are separated from God forever. Got any family members that might apply to right now? What are you doing about it? Are you praying? Are you living your life? Are you speaking the words of faith? And walking it out, sometimes when you're carrying your cross, speaking words of faith is how you carry your cross. Not, do you notice, I did, I I watched the passion of the Christ. Obviously, Jesus was in a lot of pain. But you know what? He wasn't going down the road going, you know, that one across my back, that one really hurts right now. He had a goal and a destiny and a purpose, and he was getting there by the power of the living God. We can only get to God's best for us by faith. So as we go through our day-to-day walk, it was interesting. I was looking at Romans 14, and I knew there was something in there that was specific, that was specifically for this message today, and it's right at the bottom. Whatever is not from faith is sin. When we go about our day-to-day walk and we do things, we think about things that we're supposed to do, and we're making our decisions Stop relying on your own opinion about things and say very simply, if you're looking at something and you're you're kind of a little bit concerned or maybe you're a little up in the air about it, why don't you just say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because if we commit our way to him, what does the Bible say? If we commit our way to him, he'll direct our steps. That was Romans chapter 14 in the 23rd verse. It was the very end, and it it is whatever is not from faith is sin. And actually, I will save you and send you a PDF of all these slides so you can have that to look at at home. Okay? I usually have it on the video, too. Yeah, it is. It is. So I want to go to this place because I mentioned you probably know some people. You probably know some people who are lost, their, their lives are, are, are in disarray. The chaos is evident in their life. Do you ever see the, uh, you remember the, the uh, character in uh, Peanuts Pigpen? Pigpen's walking along. You can see the dust and the dirt falling off of them. There are people I know, people you know, people who are walking in sin, and the dust and the dirt and the problems are just falling off of them. You can see it. And, 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 and rather than taking it, taking the gospel and making it personal and bowing the knee to Christ and saying, Lord, you're my Lord in the middle of all of this. What do you want me to do? They try and figure it out themselves. And you know what they end up doing? The stuff they've always done. And you know what results they get? The one, the results they've always gotten, which is the definition of insanity. People are crazy without Jesus. You just got to understand that. You're going to run into a lot of crazy people. That that and, and they and they don't and, and listen there there are there are and we have to be careful of this because sometimes in Christianity there are groups and splinters of Christians who think they got special information. Not happened, not once. It's all right there in black and white and red in that New Testament. And you can go back in the Old Testament. It's in black and white. You can read it. It's all written in there. All you th- everything you need to know about life and godliness is found in God. That even the Word says that. God has given you everything you need for life and godliness. It's in the word. But you know what? The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction.
Foolishness is the word. It, 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 they, they, think, they think that what we have is foolish, but what they don't realize is they're looking into a mirror. And what they think is foolish in the cross is the reflection of their own life and the results that they're walking out. If you, if you want to see a change in any aspect of your life, then I would suggest in the moment, repent and surrender that portion of your life as well as the rest of your life to Jesus Christ and allow him to come and walk out his victory for you in you for his glory. But we who are saved know it is the very power of God. The people who are lost see the cross, all the stuff we celebrated last week. I was I I, I sometimes I'm I'm amazed at political stupidity. Uh, but there was this pastor and his group. They were on their way back to the U.S. from from the Ukraine, where they'd been supporting and feeding, and and they were singing in celebration on the airplane. And Representative Ilhan Omar took offense to that and saw it as a political affront to her. We need to recognize whenever God tells us to praise him, praise him. I don't care where you are. I don't care if, if, you're, if you're in the middle of a fiery furnace and there, and there are a couple other people in there with you, praise God, because he'll get you through the fiery furnace into the place of safety and prosperity and health that he wants you to be. Why does God want that for you? He has a purpose for you. Do you ever have a tool in your toolbox? You don't take care of it for a while. Let's say a screwdriver that you've used for everything except a screwdriver plus being a screwdriver, and you go try to use it as a screwdriver one day, and it's twisted in places that wasn't supposed to be twisted. You know, that's what happens when we allow our life as a tool in the hand of God to be formed and shaped by sin instead of by the power of God. Because if we'll allow him to come in, he sharpens and takes care of his tools. So his tools will accomplish his purpose. What is God's purpose? That not any would perish, but all would come to repentance. How are that, how's that going to happen? Those of us who have been born again are supposed to go into all the world and make disciples. We're supposed to be witnesses about what Jesus has done, not only historically that we read that he's risen from the, the dead, and there were, there were eyewitness accounts by the hundreds of that, and, and all of the various, not only religious texts, but the, the secular texts give, give note to that. Jesus died on a Roman cross, carrying the sins of all the world, mine and yours, and then three days later rose again from the dead. That's the God that we serve, and he's told us how it is that we can live a life that overcomes. We have to deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily, and follow him. Now, I want you to understand, picking up that cross means taking those steps of faith even when the weight of the cross forces you down to your knee. It's being determined enough to endure the test, to stand back up and walk to that place where God gets glory. In your life, in your healing, in your marriage, in your family relationships, in your business, in your finances, whatever arena. It's the power of God. We who are being saved know this is the very power of God. I, uh, I saw this in First Peter this morning, and I, I had a, um, that another one of my pictures from up on the, the rock over by the house climbing yesterday. Um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. For you know that God paid a, rams a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. I'm talking about your flesh and blood ancestors, humanity. What you inherited was an empty life. Because the wages of sin is death. And we've all sinned. The word says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We walked down that Roman road last week. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
How is it that we come to him? How is it that we're born again? We repent and we believe the gospel. We repent, we change our mind, we say, you know what, Lord, I know I was unintentionally weak and sometimes I was intentionally weak, but bottom line, I failed miserably and you know it and I know it and I know that my way of doing things really doesn't work, so I surrender all and, and, I, and I pick up and walk in the newness of life that you provided for me. Now, I, I, I've, I, was, reading, I was reading the Bible, and, and, and you know, if you're reading in the King James, it says, he who believeth and is baptized will be saved. Let me tell you what that means. It's not talking about a dunk in the water. It's talking about a dunk in the blood. It's talking about, it's talking about burying your sins, all of your past. It's called taking a wall of blood and putting it between who you used to be and who you are now. And who you are now is a child of the king. And he has a purpose for your life. I don't care what your age is. I don't care what your physical condition is. God has a purpose for your life. And he'll, he'll work it out in you if you'll invite him in. Listen, it says, For you know that God paid a ransom to, to save you from, from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. <clears throat> I was watching a show last night and a guy had to pay a half a million dollar ransom to get a truck full of avocados. Who knew that avocados were that valuable? But apparently they are. Listen, that's a lot of money in avocados, a lot of avocados for the money. But you know what? Jesus' blood paid for my salvation. It wasn't dollars. It wasn't penance. It wasn't, it wasn't I walked two miles on gravel on my knees and now I'm forgiven. That's not how this works. It's, it's all, we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, the word says lest any man should boast. That means, that means, as it says in Romans, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, that means that we're agreeing with what the Word of God says, that, that Jesus is the Son of God. He's eternally begotten of the Father. He's already gone ahead of us to prepare a place for us where we're going to be with Him for eternity. And, we, and, and, and if, we'll, if we'll repent of the way we think and we'll receive the way he thinks, which is that he died for us so that we won't have to die, but instead now we live in him. In him we live and move and have our being if we choose to do that. But it's a choice. It's not, it's not like you walk up and pay for it with your visa card and now it's yours forever. You've got to walk in that. If anyone is, If anyone would come after me, Jesus said, let him deny himself, pick up his cross daily and follow me. That means whatever environment that you're in, this walk with Christ that you now have is part of that walk. How can we, being born again and, and being filled with his spirit, go back and do the things that we used to do to make our lives feel good or make our, to get our jollies, as they used to say? How can we go back and do those things that are not of faith, that we know are sin? Because the word says, Romans 14, 23, whatever is not of faith is sin. How do we go back to that? Because there is a devil who goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And that's why we have to be submitted to the Lord. This isn't a once a day ritual. It isn't a once a week ritual. It's not every day. It's every moment of the day. We have to be understanding that we're walking with him. Now, we can choose to pretend he's not walking with us or that he's looking the other way while we're not walking by faith but walking by sight. But what we get is the results of our choice. I, I even think I have a slide that shows that right there. You are free to choose, but you are not free to choose the altar. You're not free to alter the consequences of your decisions. You are free to choose, but you are not free to alter the consequences of your decisions. I read this last week out of Deuteronomy chapter 30. God sets before us life and blessing or death and cursing. And it's our choice. The quality of our life in Christ is based on our choice. How much are we willing to surrender to him? 
well, I want to see this happen, and I'd like to see this happen, and Lord, here are my petitions, and I want this for my kids and my grandkids, and I want, I'd love to see this, and I'm praying for this ministry over here, and I'm praying for that ministry. How many of you are spending so much time in prayer that you've got time to just get past your own needs? Or even past your praising and thanking God to your own needs? Or are you at that place where you can spend your time praising and worshiping Him and taking and interceding for the needs of others and then saying, Lord, you see what's before you, what's before me, and and your servant is trusting you for health and resource and be able to go out and be a witness for you. He wants that for you. He wants the best for every one of us. He wants the best for us, and he was willing to give us his best to get there. I talked about this a little while ago. The thief's purpose, steal, kill, and destroy. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. I want to tell you, your own understanding is the principal tool that the enemy uses to steal, kill, and destroy. I mean, the devil will try to steal the resurrection moment from the disciples. They thought they were seeing a ghost. (laughs) The disciples, except for Peter, were standing in a boat one day, and they see Jesus walking on the water, and they said, it's a ghost. I mean, those guys are worse than the, some of those TV shows they have, spook TV shows they have on for the, the pay, pay TV channels. We, we, we have a risen Savior. And, and, and this Jesus who was walking on the water, that disciple Peter said, well, Lord, if it's you, let me come to you on the water. How many of us are willing to step out into that place where we see Jesus in a place that might be a little bit difficult to get to? but we're willing to focus on him and walk through it to get there. Maybe your family's in disarray. Maybe you made a mistake somewhere along the way and you feel like you have to pay for that. Listen, Jesus paid it all. Come and give your heartache to him and let him redeem you. You see, he already already took care of that. His blood has already been shed for you. And peace has already been made with God so that you can walk with God into the victory that he has for you and for your marriage, and for your healing, and for your finances, and for whatever. Maybe it's a vision for your life, or a vision for your children's life. God has already made that way, but now you need to do your part. Well, what's my part? That's not up to me to answer. That's why why the Apostle Paul was such a sharp guy. He knew the right question to ask. When you're talking to lawyers, it's not the answers that you give. It's the questions you ask. And so he asked Jesus, what do you want me to do? You face those moments day to day while you're picking up your cross and you're following Jesus. Ask him that question, Lord, what do you want me to do? Stop falling into the same traps. Stop allowing your your mouth to be your assassin and the assassin of the vision that you have for your life. Stop allowing your thoughts to entertain thoughts that are not from him. If he wants you to prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, listen, I want to tell you, there were some times I didn't feel real good when I was going through cancer. There were some times I felt pretty miserable, but I listened to those healing scriptures every day, and that's what came out of my mouth. And you know what? What the report was that came out of my doctor's mouth is you're healed. You don't have cancer in your body anymore. You know what? If we'll walk out by faith, there, the enemy's going to throw, try and throw every piece of artillery and hand grenade and bullet and knife and axe in your direction that he can because he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But you need to understand a very important truth. Greater is he who is in you than he who's in the world. That means when you're facing those times where you have to choose to walk by faith or walk by sight, You can elect to walk by faith because of the one who lives inside of you. You have that right. You're a child of the Most High God. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it eat its fruit. You you listen to people and they speak and they speak and they say things that 
that are not that aren't supposed to be coming out of the mouth of believers and 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 they enjoy it it feeds them but it's not feeding them it's feeding the entity that wants to steal and kill and destroy that's why gossip and tail bearing are not part of what we're supposed to be do at, at doing ask yourself the next time you're engaging in gossip lord what do you want me to do shut up will be his answer most of the time you're not supposed to be talking about other people. You're not supposed to be carrying tales about other people. Next time that comes into your mind, unless it's something that's necessary, you have to let law enforcement or somebody connected to that know, shut up. People got enough garbage going on around their lives without you adding more garbage on top of it, like it's secret sauce. Your thoughts become your choices, which are your words and your actions, which become your habits, which become your character which allows your destiny your destiny to unfold. <clears throat> yep. You have you have to you have to find yourself in the word of God. Jesus said, "I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me <coughs> have eternal life, and they will never be condemned condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into life." And I assure you the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will live. The Father has life in himself, and he has granted that same life-giving power to his Son. Now, I want you to understand, the Word says that we've already, when we, when we take that position, that we pass from death to life. Now, I know people who have made that decision. I, I had people who came and stayed at the shelter. I was that way myself. Lord, I've done so many things. How can there possibly be a way back? Or maybe I just fooled myself at some point. You know, we don't have to allow ourselves to let doubt rule our minds. We can know we have a personal relationship with God. You know, in some societies, I, I mentioned baptism a little while ago, they can believe in Jesus in the Hindu culture. You can believe in Jesus if you want. they got thousands of gods. But get baptized you're not part of the family anymore. You just drew a line. And we need to be serious about drawing that line in our own lives. We need to allow God, where, where, where we're weak, you can say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. I, I, I've tried. You know, I, I do that. I understand that because I tried. What, what is it Yoda says? No try, do. Okay. That was pretty close, actually. <laughs> no, I'm not a little green guy, but, you know, you might think so. Anyway, a little taller than Yoda. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I, I want to encourage you. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the spirit of the living God in you. You're, you may be looking at something and you go, that's impossible. And you're right for you. But it's not impossible for God. We have to be willing to let him come in. We have to be willing to bow our knee at the cross. We have to be willing to accept the full payment that has been paid for our sin. But when that happens and we've made that baptism choice, we've been baptized in Christ. What are we supposed to do? Tracy brought it up earlier. Pentecost, I want to tell you, Pentecost happened 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. That means it already happened too. That means we're living in Pentecost. And, 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 and if you have been baptized in Christ, I want to assure you in the moment that that happened, you were baptized the fullness of the Spirit of God and wrapped, wrapped around you and came to live inside of you. But Jesus is talking about an awareness of that anointing that was, that was imparted on Pentecost that's available to every person in the church today you don't have to walk in your power you don't have to carry your cross every day on your own steam the spirit of the living god who has come to live inside of you and who anoints you will empower you to walk through those difficult steps even when you crash to your knee even when you fall on your back the word says a right the righteous fall seven times and the lord will lift him up Walk it out by faith. Don't walk it out by flesh. 
Don't walk it out according to your own understanding. Walk it out according to the Word of God. He never fails. Yes. We, the waiting thing, the waiting thing always has to, when you're waiting like that, thoughts are going to come into your head. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to just talk, pause in that moment and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then learn to listen. It's, it's a relationship. So you need to learn about the communication. When God gives you an answer, it's always going to be peaceful. There will be joy and strength inside of it. You may not understand it. It may be absolutely counterintuitive to what you would do. But listen to the Spirit. Step out over the boat and walk toward Jesus on the water. Because he's there. And if you, f- if you fall under the waves and you say, Lord, save me, he's going to be right there to pick you up and get you where you need to go. We're saved by grace. I'm kind of flipping through the rest of my notes, see if there's anything else I need to touch on here today before we close. It, it really kind of gets down to this. Um, and Reith, if you'd come on up. It really comes, comes down to this. If, if it seems evil to you, Joshua 24, 15, it's all about choices. Every, t- every time we look at a day that we get up, we're facing a, a decision. There's a challenge in our path. It's a choice. Choose you this day whom you'll serve. Choose you in this moment, wherever you find yourself, whom you'll serve. That's how we walk by faith. That's the light that came on in the Apostle Paul's head that caused him to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? He knew he was talking to the Messiah. And if you're born again, you know you're talking to the Messiah. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. So when you ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? He'll answer you. Now, I want to I wanna say that as we, as we move into this moment, and uh, I know we had a, a little bit of a, I was on the way back from bringing Paula back from uh, Monaghan's. She said, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. And uh, ladies, I want you to come up as the Lord might lead you to support her here. And and you all know, some of you know, she's been going through some stuff. And uh, and I want to tell you, the most important decision of your life is on you. And, and I know you've walked down this path before, but, but here we are, and, and you're before Christ. All right, so what you're saying is you're willing, what do you want, sweetie? Yeah, okay. All right, well, why don't I just want to, I just want to ask you right now, are you willing in this moment to, Take all of these cares and all of these challenges and all these problems and all of the things that broke you in your life and cast them on him. And uh, All right, ladies, would you? Father, in the name of Jesus, this weight of sin, this weight of I, I messed up, I failed, I screwed up, everybody in the world knows it. It's lifted from her in this moment. And the wisdom and the peace of Almighty God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is on you, Paula, in this moment, right now. Right now, as you've, as you've received him fresh and new, it's just like as you're starting all over again, just in that moment. All of that p- past is behind you. The power of the Spirit of the living God is on you. You're healed and delivered. Your family is healed and delivered. And, and even this breathing problem you've been having, Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak vitality into these lungs in Jesus' name. Father, that the alveoli would begin to be, would, would prosper. You said, beloved, I, I would wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Father, oxygen, saturate this blood. And, and Father, thank you for creative miracles going on in bodies right now. Not just, not just Paula's, but everyone who needs a healing right now. Tracy and everyone who needs a healing, healed in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for salvation. 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. New lease, in Jesus' name, Father. I I lift up, Lord. The, I lift up everyone in the Brooks household that everyone will be born again. Every every child, every spouse, every grandchild, generations born again, filled with the Spirit of God. Deliverance from addiction, deliverance of demonic oppression, over the household of, of the Brooks is broken in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you that you're flowing in 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 mercy and grace, and provision. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. And those who are listening, hallelujah. If you're listening to this right now, listening to the, the sister just gave her life back to Christ, this is an opportunity for you who are listening to give your life to Jesus. Be born again today. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus died on the cross from your sins and rose again from the dead. Be alive in him. Renounce your past. Give your, give your, your life, your now, your future to Jesus. And serve him. If it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you'll serve, whether the gods which your father served, which were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. If you're listening today and you need a miracle, the greatest miracle is salvation. Repent and believe the gospel. If you need a miracle of healing, God heals today. Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. And, and, and Lord Jesus, you said the works I do, you'll do also in greater works than these. So right now, Lord, we speak your power over every need, over every physical infirmity, over relationship issues, finances, jobs. We speak your blessing over your people. We speak hope and peace and blessing over your people. In Jesus' name, amen.